Utah look exactly like I expected Utah to look with nothing but sand and gravel and rock formations. But Colorado looks exactly how you'd expect Colorado to look with green meadows and trees and mountains everywhere. See what I mean? And this cute little mountain town down like in this valley. Alright, we can either climb back up all the way over the way we came or then go back down through Farmington <laughs> back all the way over. Farmington? Because there's nowhere to stay here around Mesa Verde? I can't Verde? find a place to stay around here. So these are the less than fun times driving in a schoolie. And up until now, most of our experience has been driving in Arizona, a little bit of New Mexico, and a little bit of Colorado. Now we're back in Colorado again for the second time and completely unable to find a place to stay the night in our bus. This is the same problem we had last time we came to Colorado and had to stay in a very expensive RV park for the whole time. And the, one another big problem is, is when you're looking at the maps and stuff, even if you're looking at like Google Earth and stuff, they don't necessarily show the elevation correctly. And so the places that I scoped out thinking, okay, we got this spot, isn't. It's totally not good. It's, it's a horrible place to try to take a vehicle, especially this size. I mean, even the Jeep, like it, it was a four wheel drive trail that we started to go up. Yeah. And it was total, I don't know if Carrie filmed any of that, but it was terrible. And we're having problems with the Jeep again, which we just had very expensively serviced and now the transmission is slipping again and so we don't know if it's like a permanent problem we just don't know what's going on we're having a bus life struggle right now so what's the <sighs> engine temperature normal 208 210 somewhere right in that range right. so we're going to take a minute to try to figure this out and see if we can find a place to go Doing, huh? Come here. Don't go in the road. Oh, mama. Oh, this thing sucks. I know, so bad. It was going along fine until the last couple hours. God, what? Oh my gosh, Mama Kitty. Just She's having a total yoga freak out right now. <laughs> Poor cat. You goofy cat, you're so funny. Noise? We always have pet owner guilt when she's been cooped up under the couch too long on travel days. So then we really want to get to a boondocking location so she can go outside instead of a parking lot where she has to just stay in the bus. She's much happier as an outdoor kitty. Oh, Mama, you're a good kitty, huh? You're the best. I'm not precisely sure where we left off yesterday because yesterday was such a stressful driving day for both Mike and I. By the time we got here, we just like <laughs> made a drink and sat down and vegged out. But we did finally find a place. This is what it looks like here. We're probably not going to be here long. I mean, it just last night and then this morning, Mike is working on something interesting that you mechanic -y guys are probably going to want to see. Are you under the bus? Yeah, right here. Oh, there you are. Okay, so the interesting thing here is that there was some concern as to whether or not this radiator right here um, fan was coming on. So yesterday we were climbing up over till towards Mesa Verde from Durango, which if any of you know, it's just this massive pass. Probably, it, it's probably the biggest pass we've attempted and the bus got pretty hot. We had to pull over and let it cool. 
And I had the wherewithal to get out of the bus and run over to see if this fan was on, and it wasn't. And I can't think of any reason why this fan wouldn't be on at that moment. So, um, I'm trying to trace it to a sensor. The problem is we don't have the manual for this bus, and that really makes it difficult to diagnose uh, problems or trace wiring and stuff like that. I mean, it's just not available. Each bus is quite different. They, they standardize to a certain extent, but it's not... It's not standard, like if you uh, you get a bus, it's gonna be like the next bus. That's far from the truth. Right, they put the Caterpillar engine in, but then all the other stuff yeah, can be different. Yeah, all the supporting components for the bus are just whatever Bluebird chooses. So you really, if you don't have the manual for your year and your model of bus, you won't, it won't be the right manual. They pump oil over to this thing to cool it off. This thing is not cooling it off and therefore it needs to be uh, fixed in some way. The alternative is for me to run wire from, watch out. <laughs> the rollout. <laughs> no, I'm skinnier, it's easier. Um, the alternative is for me to tie into this system here. If I had another um, relay somewhere, then I could tie into the fan system that I've already tied into. Who's having a little yoga sesh this morning? You are. Do you have what you need? I have a relay. Oh, good. It is really good. It's really, really, really good because now we can uh, power this. What a relay is, for those of you guys that don't know, is that you, you generally don't like pl apply power to a large motor or something from just a switch. Okay, especially if it, a motor has inductance, it could burn out switches very quickly. And so you use a relay and what it does you can apply power across a relay a very small amount of power and it closes a big switch and that big switch then is what allows power to flow through the motor and that's what relays are for so now since we have this which is really great because I didn't think I had this so now we need to tap that wire and feed power to this so that we can switch this relay I'm pretty sure I can do this I want to see what happened to my uh, sign up here. Oh, right. That's just from driving. Like yeah. I didn't hit a tree or anything. All we did is drive, okay? We just bought this sign in Winslow, Arizona on that corner. <laughs> and it's, it's already ripped. I can't even believe that. Here's the relay he just added. He just screwed it to the side of the bus wall in there. This is the one I ran from the switch all the way up. So what I'm doing here is I have officially disconnected my fan turn on connection right here. And we are going to branch it. All I'm doing is branching my signal wire from the switch up front to here. And that's just making it so that we can... Uh, Power them both at the same time. Yeah, that's the switch. I do believe I'm doing this right. I sure hope so. If not, we'll know. <laughs> What? Get in there. What the hell's going on over there? Okay, got them both hooked so up. So now I'm just gonna look on my phone just to be a thousand times certain. So our, uh, the wiring is correct. Oh good. So the last one right here is the actual feed wire. And that's the wire that's gonna run this whole thing.
We've got a uh, fan on. One of the built-in cooling systems hasn't been operating. And so we the oil cooler hasn't been cooling. That's bad. So we didn't know this until we finally figured it out. So now by turning this back on, we might have overkill cooling, which would be just okay with me. <laughs> All right, go uh, turn that fan switch on. Okay, ready? Yeah. Anything? Okay, turn it off. Okay, turn it on. Whoops. Okay, turn it off. It works. It's loud. Something needs like oiled or greased or something in there. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> cool. What, Mamacita? You're talking about it too? Are you helping, Dad? Good job. We've been out here digging holes. I thought it was to go to the bathroom, but she just digs a hole and then walks away and leaves it. She just likes to dig. She's the diggingest cat you ever saw. Such a nut job. Oh, I didn't have the camera in my hand. He just got this whole, is this the fan? This is the fan. This is the problem fan. Yeah, and there's the noise right there. It's hitting something or something? Yeah. Oh. So it's that little thing sticking out yeah. in there that's, oh, it wobbles and hits it. Oh, the motor bearing is pretty much had it. Oh. So this might be something we need to replace. Yeah. It's going to have to be through AAA bus. It's, it's the only way I can even imagine getting it. Getting the exact right one, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a little quieter for now anyway. I don't know yet. <laughs> we haven't turned it on. Hey, go turn on. Okay. Turn. That seems a little quieter. Okay. Oh, I guess we should turn it on one more time just to see. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Well, until we can get a replacement fan for that. I mean, well. we've been driving this bus around for almost a year now. I know. Not knowing that that wasn't working. This is a great fix. Yeah, and we would have known if it came on, we would obviously would have heard it. So now that we have the ability to cool our oil, I imagine we're going to run a bit cooler. Yeah, and you know what? What better timing than in Colorado where we're going up and down hills all the time. Like we really need the engine to be able to stay cool while we're here. It'd be really interesting to see how the engine performs now with the oil getting cooled uh, compared to what we were dealing with before so i know and we'll know immediately yeah the temperatures will be should be a pretty big difference in temperature there's another plane going by it's men in black baby <laughs> and just like that we're on to the next part of our adventure Cow crossing. Oh, go ahead, fella. Cow crossing in Colorado. Go ahead, little fella. Go ahead. Catch up with your buddies over there. 
Oh my God, you guys, there was just a major blowout explosion out of the back of the bus. Water just came gushing out massively all at once. And I saw pieces of plastic blowing out all over the road. I was running over them. There was nothing I could do. And I knew it was that plastic overflow tank from up in the engine. Oh my gosh. Let's go see the damages. Uh, Where'd she go? Okay, let me go unlock her door in case she wants to go back in. Back to the back. Oh, come on, Mama Kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, Mama Sita. I know you're freaking out. No, no, Mama. Come here, Mama. Go over on that side and scare her back to me. She might come to me. Are you going back in, honey? I know Dad left the door open on you. Sorry, honey. I'm sorry I had to grab your foot. Okay. <sighs> Once chaos starts happening, more chaos just keeps happening. <laughs> we got Mama Sita back in the bus safe and sound. Oh my gosh, so... There's the pieces. There's pieces of the tank that splattered out into the engine compartment back here, I take it. Yeah. Is there any like damage done back here? No. I mean, it did hit this so hard it blew the... Uh, the lens, the lens cover off. off. Yeah. yeah. I saw that go bouncing down the road for sure. I thought it was the cap of this, right. but it was that lens cover. There it is. Gotta get that back on. So, is there a way to bypass that somehow? Or what do we have to do? Cause that's gonna be a pretty hard part to find. I'm not sure yet. There you go. What I think we can do is put water in it, fill it up, and then finish climbing out of here. Cause it's a, like, this enormous downhill right after this. Yeah, there's really no alternative to that piece other than making something to suffice. It's the overflow, but it's a pressure vessel nonetheless. And so that's why we had the detonation. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I found source of water. Whoa. It's like a natural spring that fed for the fed the railroad. Right? They probably had a tank at the top. If you look up there, there's a measuring gauge for how much water. Oh, they... that's a water filler pipe thingy. Yeah, and up there is the gauge for how much they put in at the top. Oh, up, See up there? there. So up on top somewhere up there um, is the pipe to fill the narrow gauge railroad. Or the wow. thing that's filling that and that, well, the uh, obvious source. So interesting and so lucky if we had to break down, we broke down like, I don't know, half a mile even maybe from here, quarter of a mile. Maybe eight. Eighth of a mile? We bar that's true, we could walk if we needed to. I'm out of breath from walking around <laughs> up in the mountains. Really? I'm not, that's so weird. I didn't even know, but we're like at almost 10,000 feet right here. Yeah. Like there's probably a sign right around here. There it is, 10,022 feet. Like this is where- Literally we're, right where we're pulling out from. Yeah, we popped like, like a block from that. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, maybe, let's see. Here we go. 500 right feet, 600 road. feet, oh, yeah, 700 right feet there. maybe. There's the place we just got the water. There's us. Yeah. 
That's oh, crazy. so lucky, so lucky, so lucky. Okay. We are very lucky in our unluckiness. Like, it seems like we have little problems on the side of the road all the time, but they're always little problems that are easily overcome, so. <laughs> so far. Yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> There's the right end and the left end of what used to be our water tanky thingy. Yeah. What is it called, the overflow or something? Yeah, like? it is the overflow. Careful, this could burp. Oh, okay. Need to stay back. It's going to be interesting to see how many gallons we lost. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, it was impressive how much fluid poured out of this thing. There we go for our next trip up to the yep. railroad filling station. Right. The water company, the water line. What was it? In Monopoly, it was the short line. We're going to the water line. Okay, will you hold this up here for me now? Okay. Okay, let's go get some more water. We're literally at the summit now. So all we have to do now is get downhill. Is go the other side. It, it's, it's literally like almost a, well, there's a couple tiny little climbs between here and there, but it's a pretty smooth downhill all the way to Alamosa. This. Oh, to Alamosa? All the way to Alamosa. Oh, I thought we were going to have to stop at some other town before we even to Alamosa. I don't have a, a solid answer for this yet. We'll find out. Yeah. This is crazy. Like, how lucky is this? I couldn't believe it when I came around the end of that house because I was thinking, oh my gosh, there, there's not going to be a water faucet at this house up high in the mountains because there's no water here. There's no water company here. But yeah. then I heard the trickling of water. I couldn't believe it when I found this pipe. As soon as I heard the thump, I looked in the rearview mirror and I saw all the steam and I knew what it was right away. But just your voice, man. Then came me on the radio. Oh my oh, god! god. There's plastic! <laughs> I'm telling you, it's because there was such a prolific amount of fluid coming out of the back of that thing. For a second, I literally thought our entire engine had blown. That's how bad I thought it was. <laughs> That's how bad it looked, okay? It looked bad. <laughs> we just flew through a jet wash. <laughs> We're in a flat spin. <laughs> Engine one flamed out. Engine two flamed out. <laughs> you know, I can't say that I'm surprised. Our bus is how old? 20 or 30? 30, 30 years old? 30 years old? Yeah. Plastic doesn't just last forever. I mean, we're lucky it even lasted as long as it did. Sorry. Okay, it's just water. <laughs> okay, here's a close up on this narrow railway over here. And if you have ever been around railroad tracks, you will know immediately that they are not normally close enough together to put both your feet on them at the same time. So cute. It's like a little mining tracks or something. All right, here you go. Since we don't have this pressure vessel here, we still need like a closed system or we'll get a little bit warm and water will spurt out the different hoses. Bring in these. This will be for a small one right here. Like that. So we're going to put that on there and leave it. Next thing we need to do is we need something that we can fit into here and then tighten this down. So gonna have to do some bushcrafting um, on this one. What is this actually for? This is actually for tire repair. Oh. Hold this for a second. Sure. This is its purpose is to rub down a tire patch on the inside of the tire. Oh, to press it down. That makes sense. So now we're gonna use that to plug this up. This is definitely as Mike Guyver as it gets. Seriously? This is 100% MacGyver. Oh my gosh. MacGyver would be like patting me on the back. Like, 
I know, he would be like right. bowing down. Dang it, you guys, I just got stung by a bee and I'm mildly allergic to bees. So you never know how bad it's going to be compared to the last time and my last time was pretty bad so I gotta take some Benadryl and ah. Uh, Where'd you get stung at? On the inside of my arm, somewhere right in here, right there. Okay. The bee was stuck to me and I you had to saw use, it. oh yeah, and I had to use the camera cord to flick him out of my skin and okay. but his stinger came out too, the stinger wasn't left in there. Not having trouble breathing or anything, oh, feeling tickly yeah. or swelling? No, and last time I broke out in hives first before any other reaction, you know what I mean? I mean seriously, didn't I say whenever there's one kind of chaos, like more chaos just keeps happening? <laughs> I totally called it on that one. Well, so far it's working. Decided to give it a test run just this short little distance up the road to the railroad shack. But so far everything seems to be holding. Okay, that is a good, good sign. I'm gonna go over here and fill up those jugs with water just in case we need it one more time. We're at 10,230 feet elevation. And so far, the bus is performing fine with its temporary fix. Guess what, you guys? We just got to the gutted event. What in the world, you guys? This is like the road to nowhere. And just keep following the road that goes in a half circle all the way around the whole site. Okay, it's called the gutted event, but it could also very easily be called the dust bowl. It's like walking in baby powder, like foot deep baby powder in some places. It's ridiculous. And all that dust is going to be in our bus. Dirt yoga right away. Yeah, she needed a yoga sesh at the end of this stressful day of driving. Yeah, it's very stressful. Watch out for dogs. Oh my gosh, corner drop immediately. I think I might second you on that. It's a kind of a cool Colorado sunset. It's so pretty out here, you guys. It's such a pretty evening. Okay, you guys, we're gonna go hang out behind the scenes of the filming of the little opening ceremony of the gutted event. And the schoolie team over there. Welcome to Gutted So obviously we're going to be somewhat limited on how much and what we can film while we're here at the gutted event for obvious reasons because it's a competition and it's a TV show and they don't want us filming anything that's going to give away 
what's happening. So we'll film as many little bits and pieces as we possibly can just to kind of give you an idea of what this whole experience is like for us. I think it's going to be really exciting and fun.